Hey guys, in this video we're going to be looking at the depletion of ozone. There's a depletion of O3 from the ozone layer up in the atmosphere. Now this is not to be confused with climate change or global warming. These are two completely separate issues. One of the important things to take note of in this video is the equations. They are really important to recall and get right. If you want to practice lots, if you want to check you thoroughly understood everything in this video, then there are loads of practice questions waiting for you over my website. The ozone layer can be found within the stratosphere. Our atmosphere is very deep, very long, and it is divided into layers. And the ozone layer is just one of those layers. The function of ozone is to absorb UVB from the sun. So ozone protects us, protects life on Earth from the effects of UVB. UVB has a range of harmful effects such as sunburn, genetic damage and cancer. So it is very important that human life, animal life and plant life are protected from this. The formula for ozone is O3. I'm going to draw you a dot and cross diagram to show you the double bonds and the dative bonds. I know I've done everything in crosses with different colours, that's just because it's looked pretty. Don't do that in your exam. So oxygen will have one double bond and one dative covalent bond. Images from NASA can show that there is a growing hole in the ozone layer. Now, it isn't very hole shaped. Here, this blue area we can see is the thinning of the ozone layer. This is an image taken from 1979, and this is an image from 2008. And we can see that the hole is getting larger. From 1979 to 2008, there has been a massive increase. Now, this is a problem because it means that that area the life under that area is not being protected from UVB. So if the ozone is not there, it cannot protect us. CFCs are chlorofluorocarbons. And they are incredibly useful things. They can be used as solvents, as flame retardants, or in refrigeration. They are very stable, and this is due to the strength of the carbon-halogen bond. And they will remain stable until they reach the upper atmosphere, and only then will they break down, where they will form radicals, which are the problem. Now, CFCs were very popular for a very long time because of their properties. They are non-toxic. They are volatile which means they can easily be turned into a vapour and they are non-flammable. CFCs are still entering the atmosphere today as they have a very long life. However, CRCs are responsible for the depletion of ozone. The UV in the upper atmosphere will break down that carbon-halogen bond, giving us a halogen radical. These halogen radicals can then react with ozone and oxygen further to create more radicals. Chlorine radical will react with ozone to give oxygen. And the chlorate radical produced in that reaction will react with oxygen atom to give the chlorine radical back again making a propagation reaction and O2. The chlorate radical can also react with ozone itself to give a chlorine radical and O2. The overall effect of this reaction is to take the ozone O3, react it with an oxygen atom to give two O2s. NO is another radical that can catalyse this reaction or can catalyse the breakdown of ozone. In a very similar set of reactions to chlorofluorocarbons, 
giving the same overall reaction of ozone being turned into oxygen gas. This is a problem that needs to be solved. Fortunately, lots of countries are still using CFCs because they are very cheap and they have lots of properties that make them popular. CFCs are still entering the atmosphere because they can take a long time to get up there. And there are still lots of CFCs, well, might not be in current usage, are stored in places like old refrigerators at the dump. Scientists are investigating alternative coolants that we can use in our refrigeration systems or flame retardants that we can use. And governments have legislated against the use of CFCs to prevent their release into the atmosphere.